What is the story of Arkenfell in the Giver universe? Who is he and what is he? Is he human, alien, or something else? Most of the information will be taken from the manga because that's the source material for everything. Now, you might see his name as Arkenfell, Alkenfell, or Arukenferu. To get a better understanding of this character and what his purpose is, we first have to go back in time, far into the past. Arkenfell is shown within a pod or some type of birthing chamber. He is awoken from his slumber and a voice speaks out to him through telepathy. This alien race is known by a few names, the Creators, Advents, or Uranus. They reveal to Arkenfell that they created all living things in your world. The planet's ecosystem was manipulated in order to create beings like him. Their plan was to create an army to serve them. Every being was designed with a strong body that could adapt to a variety of environments. They were loyal, intelligent, and would follow their commands, and Arkenfell would lead them into war. Uranus mentions that even the dinosaurs were created by them, but they were seen as failed experiments, so all life on the planet was erased, just so they could start over. The humans they selected were processed into zoonoids, which is their battle form. They would show absolute obedience to you and to the creators. Arkenfell was given similar powers the creators possess. Arkenfell would remain loyal to Uranus, controlling the army in their name. He would rule the entire planet as the first Zoolord. Uranus would then reveal the rest of their plan to create 11 more Zoolords and a billion Zoonoids. Their entire army would be transported across space. Right before they were going to leave the planet, they decided to try one more experiment. What would happen if a processed human would wear the suits worn by the creators themselves? The being merged with the suit to become the very first Giver. The suit would enhance the abilities of a being who is designed for combat, something the creators were not meant for. As they watch Giver Zero battle a dinosaur, it shows how far the human weapon's ability can be pushed. This alien suit makes them even more effective in combat. While the experiment proved to be worthwhile, there was something the creators did not expect. The processed human was not responding to their orders. It refused to remove the armor, and then it used a giant energy attack to destroy one of the alien ships. It turned against its creators, and now there was uncertainty in the human race as a controllable weapon. Arkenfell was ordered to lead his army and destroy the bio-armor worn by the human. The humans transformed into zoonoids and led an attack, but the zoonoids got demolished. The bio-armor warrior was just too powerful for them. It had special abilities that made it a unique and dangerous enemy. Arkenfell was going to destroy the Giver with his bare hands, but Uranus could not risk losing Arkenfell. Without him, they would have no means of stopping the Giver. So he was given the unit remover. It would remove the G-unit to its dormant state, but the only drawback is you would have to use it in very close range to the target. Arkenfell succeeds, and the G-unit is removed, and the human is destroyed. This is when the creators realized a big problem. If Zoonoids are free from the mind control while wearing a G unit, the same thing would happen to a Zoolord, but it would also become the most powerful being in the universe. And so the creators decided to terminate the human race and eliminate all life on Earth. They start to leave the planet without explaining anything to Arkenfell. As Arkenfell chases them like a lost child, he demands answers, but they ignore his request and tell him to remain behind. The organisms created on this planet have a defect that disrupts their control, and that problem manifests when they merge with the creator's standard equipment worn by them. Humans are now seen as a complete failure. They demonstrated enormous fighting power, but they cannot control it with the G-Unit so it poses as a threat to the creators. As Arkenfell tries to chase his creators, they use a powerful psychic attack on him, which weakens him severely, but Arkenfell survives and vows to find out 
why he was created and then abandoned. The G unit was named Giver, which meant out of control. Now, to completely destroy the planet, Uranus transports a gigantic meteorite through a portal. The impact would end all life on the planet. How would you even stop this attack? Even though he is injured, Arkenfell's anger fuels him to retaliate. He powers up and enlarges a shield around him, flying towards the meteorite and smashing into it at full force, and thus, saving the planet. After the event, Arkenfell would remain within the partially destroyed ship. It acted as a life support system as he rested. Some pieces of the meteorite would still smash into Earth, which brought upon the Ice Age, but humans would survive. A temple was then constructed around the alien wreck for their master to sleep in, and he lay there, dormant, for many years. A very long time afterwards, a simple old man, who was nearing the end of his days, decided to explore the world aboard a Portuguese merchant vessel, but it was caught in a storm within the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. When he awoke, he appeared on an island. Perhaps he was the only survivor. Now at first he thought, maybe this was the new world he heard about, but later realized it was some strange, bizarre island. As he ventured further, he came across unnamed species of birds, dinosaurs, and even mermaids. He continued his path until he came across a man-made road which led him to a temple. The entire island was surrounded by giant vortexes, maybe to keep the inhabitants inside or to deter intruders from coming near. It was also surrounded by a powerful psionic field. While he explored the sacred temple, the old man would come across the resting chamber of Arkenfell. He reached out with his hand and touched it. Arkenfell would then awaken. Arkenfell asked who this old man was. He only responded with, I am your servant. The old man knew this being was infinitely superior to him. The old man would later be known as Dr. Hamilcar Barkas, or in some other sources as Dr. Balkas. Arkenfell would share his plan to search for his creators someday. He would lead an army into space, and all of them would share in his power. Dr. Barkas would later be processed into a Zoa Lord while accepting one of Arkenfell's Zoa crystals, and his mission now was to find 11 other beings to become Zoa Lords. But as time passed by, Arkenfell would not be seen by Dr. Barkas, sometimes for a year or longer. Upon returning to the island, Dr. Barkas would find Arkenfell in a state of near death. Arkenfell was processed in a different way compared to the Zoa Lords after him. And after he suffered that psychic attack from Uranus, he required long periods of rest, with each time increasing in length. This also led him to being vulnerable, unable to defend himself while he rested. Dr. Barkas went on a search for candidates to become Zoa Lords, and continued his work in processing new Zoanoid types. Arkenfell would continue sleeping as the world continued on. Mankind and technology would evolve over time. When all the new Zolords were formed, they took control of the Kronos Corporation in various parts of the world. Aside from Arkenfell, only one other Zolord knew the secrets of the Biobooster armor and what it would do to a Zolord. A Giver Zolord would become the most destructive force in the universe. Nothing could control it, and nothing could stop it. And that Zolord who found this secret was Richard Guo, the final candidate who was processed into the last Zoa Lord. Guo learned about the Giver units and their impressive abilities. Guo also acquired the unit remover from a relic ship located within Mount Minakami. His plan was to remove the G unit from Giver 1 or Giver 3 and bond with the armor to make himself more powerful than anyone else. But analysis on how the device worked was not complete so his scientists worked secretly in the bottom floors of the facility. Guo would then act on his own in an attempt of retrieving the Giver units. While the heroes of the story were being monitored, a special zoonoid, Aptum, would report his findings to Dr. Barkas. This is when Dr. Barkas realized Guo's plan to rebel against the other Zoa Lords, if he got a hold of a Giver unit. Guo would track down Giver 1, Giver 3, and Masaki Murakami, hoping to acquire a G-unit for himself. He appeared too strong for them, and even survived a direct hit from the Mega Smasher. From the anger fueling his body, 
He destroyed the cliff they were on, but they managed to escape. Arkenfell would appear after a long period of rest, knowing well about Kyuo's plan to steal a Giver unit for himself. Arkenfell went to Relic's Point at Mount Minakami. Despite the many years he was sleeping, Arkenfell still kept a youthful but elvish look to him with pointy ears. His eyes were also cat-slit and yellow in color. The other Zoa Lords would have a meeting after they discover of Guo's plan. Dr. Barkus informed them to come to Relic's Point later on. Most of the Zoa Lords believed Arkenfell to be a capricious person, but they were not aware of the resting period their master required, so he was absent during many meetings. This also meant that Guo, the last Zoa Lord to be processed, never met Arkenfell. Dr. Shirai, who is working secretly for Guo, later uncovers the secret to the unit remover. After it awakens from the vibrations of the relic ship, the device would then run on bioenergy from a being holding it. Arkenfell would search the base for the traitor Guo, only to confront him later on. Dr. Barkus and Guo can both feel this immense surge of power. Arkenfell has returned. He tells Guo that the last time they met was when Guo was in the processing tank so Guo never laid eyes upon Arkenfell or felt his immense power until now. Arkenfell has come to claim the unit remover and he's fully aware that Guo has acquired it. Surprised at his claims, Guo has no idea who this man is and how he knows everything. Despite Guo's treachery, Arkenfell is willing to overlook this rebellious act because his plan requires all 12 Zoa Lords, but if Guo refuses, he will be eliminated by Arkenfell. As Giver 1 and Giver 3 enter the alien relic spaceship within Mount Minikami, they come across the location of where the G units were stored one time. They eventually locate the control medallion that's part of the ship's control room. It reacts to Giver 1's control medal and connects to him, feeding him memories of the past. Giver 1 learns about the advent aliens, the reason humans and zoonoids were created, and also what the unit remover does. If they can take control of the relic ship, they can destroy the base within Mount Minikami. The only thing left is to figure out how to control it on command. Meanwhile, Commander Gyu is running from Arkenfell to reclaim the unit remover for himself. No matter what attack he uses on Arkenfell, this being is just too powerful, so Gyu continues to run away. Eventually, Arkenfell catches up to Guo and offers him one last chance to give up the unit remover and he will be allowed to live. But Guo responds with more attacks against his master. He defeats Arkenfell with the use of a black hole. Arkenfell has vanished. Guo would later attempt to take Giver 3's unit, but the unit remover is still not fully charged. So as our heroes try to escape, Masaki Murakami buys them time, but loses his life in the process. As they try to escape aboard the relic ship, the other Zolords appear and attack the relic ship together. They cannot allow our heroes to acquire all that alien technology, so it must be destroyed. Right when Gyo is about to use the unit remover on Giver 1, a bright surge of light appears in the sky. Arkenfell has returned, and now in its full Zolord battle form. Using his incredible power, Gyu is unable to fight back. Arkenfell takes back his Zoa crystal by ripping it from Gyu's head. His body takes another huge attack from Giver 3's pressure cannon, which blasts a huge hole into Gyu's chest. His body then falls down below, along with the unit remover. This new being is unknown to the Givers, but they see him as a threat, so they combine their Mega Smasher attack on him but this attack is deflected easily by Arkenfell. The ending shows Giver 1 being vaporized by his own attack, and the alien relic ship is destroyed in the process. The Givers have been defeated. Arkenfell would then take Guo's Zoa crystal and use it for his next Zolord commander. The body of the proto-Zolord Murakami is used to create the 13th Zolord, Immacrum Mirabilis. Murakami was captured by Kronos a long time ago, and turned into a protozoalord against his will. He was used for the testing phase to create Guo's battle form. He was the only protozoalord to survive being eliminated. This is why he wanted to destroy Kronos. However, Immacrum Mirabilis 
was connected to Arkenfell after being processed. Dr. Barkis was sure this Zolord would not rebel. He would only serve Arkenfell. Kronos would then fight against the resistance on the planet, overtaking every country until Kronos ruled everything. Sometime later, Giver 3 appears next to a chrysalis, made up from the same material as the relic ship. He tries to scan inside, but can only see the ship's merged control metal and Giver 1's control metal, but no body of Giver 1. Kronos arrives shortly after and claims the chrysalis. It gets airlifted back to base. Unable to do anything in its current state, Giver 3 just watches and vows to get it back. Even Dr. Barkas tries to see inside, but can only sense the contents are undergoing a metamorphosis. Despite not knowing what it is, he can sense danger. Later in the story, Zextol, who is part of the Hyperzoanoid Team 5, was upgraded. He is now more powerful than ever. After he defeats Aptum, who has now joined our heroes, Mizuki and the others are left in danger. With Mizuki screaming out for Shofukamachi, the Chrysalis hears her screams and awakens. It rises into the sky, and Giver 3 is seen to approach it just in time. The Chrysalis then teleports to Mizuki's location. Giver 3 also appears alongside the Chrysalis and challenges Zextol, but Giver 3 is not strong enough and is defeated. Just when things are about to get worse, the Chrysalis opens up, and out comes something new, a tall, large being that looks like a Giver. This is Giver Gigantic, the result of the Relic Ship's two control metals merging with Giver 1's control metal. Shofukamachi wanted more power, something that could stand up to a Zolord, and this is what the Relic Ship gave him. Zextol gets overpowered by Giver Gigantic, so he flies into space to charge up his ultimate attack with solar energy. Because of the modifications Zextol underwent, his body would not last long, so this attack will surely destroy him as well. He releases his ultimate Blaster Tempest, but it's no match for Giver Gigantic's Giga Smasher. Zextol destroys himself with his own attack in the process, and Shofu Kamachi's body comes out from the Giver Gigantic's bio armor, but the happy reunion does not last long. Sho would regain consciousness and tell his team what he remembers. When he was defeated by Arkenfell, he asked the ship's control metal to give him more power, something strong enough to protect his friends, something to fight against the Zoa Lords. The cells of the relic ship and the spheres had melted, then merged into the gigantic armor we just saw right now, and a new Giver was formed. After some time, Arkenfell would keep a low profile about his actions, while using a Macarum Mirabilis as his way of staying in contact with the other Zolords within the Council. It wasn't long after until Giver 1 and Giver 3 meet up with their newest enemy. As they invade and attack a Kronos building, they make their way to an unguarded room and they are greeted with a familiar voice. In their normal Giver forms, neither Sho or Agito are able to stand a chance against this new Zolord. They try to remind him who he was, but it's no use. He is now a true Zoalord, a servant of Arkenfell. Even though Sho knows this new enemy is out to get him, he refuses to summon the gigantic armor, knowing that his tremendous power would destroy what's left of his old friend. But as the battle goes on, our heroes are overpowered. With a sense that all hope is lost, Sho Fukamachi has no choice. He summons the gigantic armor before his control metal is about to be taken. Gigantic charges up the Giga Smasher, aims upwards, but intentionally misses his target. He used it as a distraction to escape and save his friends, a decision he might regret later on. Arkenfell would then reveal the full extent of his plan. Kronos was using tissue samples from the relic ship to create something he calls the Ark. It was 50 kilometers long, had a complete ecosystem, and it was a living creature, just like the alien relic ship. Arkenfell wanted to search for the Advents who abandoned him about 20 million years ago. Now was his time to search for his creators and battle against the Advents. But it does not leave the planet for another year. But first, he must return to his resting chamber on Scylla Island. Before his hibernation begins, he gives Imakurum one final task. Obtain the G-Unit at any cost. 
a Macrum has undergone a special procedure that makes him obedient to Arkenfell. He will never betray him. He is now a devoted, faithful servant of Arkenfell. A Macrum Mirabilis would later track down our heroes and challenge Gaver One, so they take to the sky for their battle. Meanwhile, Aptum and Gaver Three battle the new Enzyme Three Zonoids down below. Gyver Gigantic proves to have enough power to defeat a Macrum, but even with a chance to end the battle, Sho refuses to do so. The memory of his friend Murakami still haunts him. He just can't do what he has to do. And once again, Sho's emotional attachment is what leads to his defeat. Gyver Gigantic is defeated. The control medal will soon belong to Kronos. Even in his weakened state, Sho manages to summon the Chrysalis once again. But this time, Gyver 3 steps into it and dons the gigantic armor, which forms a new Gyver Gigantic. The chrysalis darkens with Gyver 3 inside. Shortly after, it opens. This is what we call Gigantic Dark. Gyver 3 feels an incredible amount of power and abilities now at his disposal. This is the body and power of a giant. And unlike Shofukamachi, Agito will not succumb to emotional attachments. He's here to end the fight. Both Imakrum and Gigantic Dark exchange different attacks, only to see Imakrum's power start to fade. So he pulls out his ultimate attack, the Virtual Black Hole. But this one is more powerful than the one used by Gyo. It's turned into an immense gravity storm, sucking up water, buildings, and vehicles. Its power is enormous. But how can it be stopped? Gigantic Dark ends up reading the inner workings of the virtual black hole. There seems to be a way to stop it. By using the Giga Smasher, he's able to stop the energy flux that moves at a high velocity. The black hole is then stopped. Gigantic Dark uses this chance to rush in and delivers a crushing blow to Imakarum's face. The impact and force is so strong, it cracks his Zoa crystal. Arkenfell awakens from his sleep and senses that a Macroom is in trouble. He teleports to his location and recovers the body. Then, he quickly fades away back to Scylla Island. Now back at his temple on Scylla Island, Arkenfell places a Macroom's body within a birthing pod, the same one used by himself a long time ago. He allows his servant to rest and recover from his injuries. Back at the council meeting of Zolords, Dr. Barkus reveals the history to Arkenfell's past. He speaks with two of his most trusted Zolords and tells them of when he met Arkenfell long ago, and also reveals the current condition of his health. As the story progresses, we see a man that looks like Commander Gyo. Yes, he has returned. But how? Well, a group of three Zolords are planning to rebel against the others. They healed his body so he would serve them, but he is not as strong as before. Imakarum is later seen again when the Ark starts to move in space to a new location. It fires a revitalizing energy beam down to the location of Arkenfell's temple. Imakarum awakens and finds out Arkenfell used a lot of his energy to activate the beam from the Ark. Arkenfell needed to rest soon, so he used his power to heal Imakarum a bit faster. So now, there was at least one of them awake to protect the other. But this was a time when Arkenfell needed to go into hibernation once again. Drained of energy and severely weakened, he requested his servant Imakarum to return his body to the island of Scylla. Because Imakarum used the same pot as Arkenfell, he was able to see images from the past, the pain of what Arkenfell had endured so long ago. We later get a glimpse of Richard Gyu again appearing outside a villa where our heroes are hiding. He remembers when he was once a Zoolord. Then, it was all taken away from him by Arkenfell. For a long period in the story after this, we don't see Arkenfell or Imacrum Mirabilis. The story focuses on both gigantic Gyvers battling different Zoolords, along with Agito creating his own team of Zoonoids, Aptum being captured, and some other events. There was suspicion amongst the council that other Zolords were planning to rebel, just like Yuo did before. Arkenfell wanted to be the only one to activate a Giver unit. There was a chance its regenerative abilities would help his current health condition. But other Zolords might be planning to intercept the Giver before Arkenfell can get a hold of the control medal. 
they would even go as far as attacking one of their own Zoa Lords in order to get the Giver Control Medal for themselves. The rest of the manga goes pretty deep into the story. A few more Zoa Lords get defeated, Giver 3 finds his own relic control medal to form his own gigantic armor, Shizu gets turned into a Zoanoid to control their own brand of creatures. Dr. Barkus is defeated by Giver 3, but survives the encounter. Gyo comes back into the story, but not as strong as before. But throughout all of this, Arkenfell and Imacro Mirabilis remain hidden from the story for a long time. We even get to see the birth of Gigantic Exceed, which makes Gigantic Givers grow to the size of a building. This happens when they encounter the Zoa Lord Cabral Khan, who absorbs a huge number of Zoanoids in the city to grow a shell of his Dragon Lord form. And to make things more interesting, Kronos was able to create their own artificial Giver Control Metal, but with limited energy during transformation. Valkyria was a former inspector of Kronos. Since she is named Giver 2F, it's most likely that the cells of Giver 2's control metal were used in this process. But the best part of the story is near the end. A new character appears on the Ark ship through a portal. He's picked up on the monitors, and the Zoanoids on board say only a Zoalord can freely roam the Ark, hinting that this person might be a Zoalord in disguise. Deep within the ship is the Zoalord Edward Carleon, who says that the Ark cannot move without the Twelve Holy Commanders. One by one, the Zoalords are falling to the Givers, but now they have a new enemy. The Zoa crystal from Cabral Khan is still missing. After he was destroyed by Aptum on top of the building, we only see a Zoa crystal fall down, so we don't know if it's destroyed or taken by someone else. So this new enemy is able to freely roam the Ark, subdue other Zoanoids with its psychic abilities, and use portals to travel to other locations. But who or what is he? He only goes by the name of Apollyon, but sometimes it's read as Apollon. Even his glowing aura radiates immense power and is felt by those nearby. During his battle against Edward, Apollyon displayed the same powers as his enemy, controlling plasma spheres and using splitting images while remaining in a pocket dimension. Edward was losing the battle when he realizes only one other Zoalord could have the same power as him. The one who bestowed the power upon him was Arkenfell. Edward is defeated shortly after, and his Zoa crystal is taken by Apollyon. It's later revealed by some other Zoalords that Apollyon's armor is made from the same material as the Giver's. He is very much like the other Zoalords, but is hunting each of them down. Apollyon is then shown talking about two Zoalords that are planning to rebel. He finds out that Richard Gyo is alive, so he plans to follow him. As he looks up at the sky, he says, the scheduled time is near, time is running out, hinting that his plan to collect the Zoa crystals is similar to Arkenfell's plan, which requires all 12 Zoa crystals before the Ark can go into deep space. Gigantic Dark would later appear before Giver 1 during a battle with him. Agito revealed that he no longer required the chrysalis of the first Gigantic. Akito went out to find his own relic control medal in Arizona. With the help of his team, he was able to create his own gigantic armor. There's a point in the story when Giver 1 gets covered with Aptim's body to sneak into a chrono space. He borrows Aptim's powers to be invisible, just to meet with a Zoalord to learn about their new enemy, Apollyon. Apollyon would make an appearance again when he followed Richard Guo. Guo possessed a dummy crystal which Apollyon was not interested in. He overpowered Aptim and Gyu and quickly made his escape with the Sagawa siblings. In a mere second, he vanished through a portal. Both of them are taken to the island of Scylla. They explore the temple until they find an ancient ruin connected to zoonoids and all life on the planet. They saw dinosaurs, zoonoids, the alien relic ship, and even an image of Arkenfell. They explore the island but are later met up with Apollyon once again. He takes them back to the temple to rest in a made-up home. For some reason, Apollyon seems to show a level of kindness to them and then leaves. The last thing we see in the story is Arkenfell sleeping in the bedroom upstairs. There is only one other person who would be at the island and that would be Imacrum Mirabilis. 
The story within the Giver manga was never completed, so we don't know what happened to Arkenfell, Imakrum, or Apollyon afterwards. Some sources say that Apollyon's identity could be an agent of the Advents, or it could be Arkenfell who suddenly awoke. Perhaps he found a Giver unit to fix his ongoing health problem, and this new energy is what Dr. Barkas saw coming from Arkenfell's body. Another theory is that Imacrum Mirabilis could be Apollyon. He was revived within Arkenfell's life pod. Maybe a part of Arkenfell's powers transferred into him during that procedure. Apollyon does have Zoolord powers like all the others, something only Arkenfell has access to, and Apollyon seems to know the location of the island. The mystery to his armor is kept a secret. Did he activate a Giver unit to become stronger? We don't know. The rest of the story is incomplete. So that covers the story of Arkenfell, the first Zoolord, his origins, his mission, and his disappearance, along with other characters that I had to include to make the story easier to understand. But of course, the manga is incredibly long, so there are a lot of things I left out. I wanted to focus on some key points in the story, but there's a lot you can discover by reading it yourself. Now, I did cover other topics around the Giver universe in the past, so I will leave links to those videos. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then leave a thumbs up on it. You can also subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. This is definitely the longest topic I ever covered for a video. I went through the entire manga again just to make this specific video about Arkenfell. I do hope the manga story gets finished someday because I want to know what happens after. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Carlos, or Acid Glow, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.